Welcome back, everybody. My next guest is a civil rights activist, co-founder of Until Freedom, and an author. Her new book is called State of Emergency. Please welcome to A Late Show, Tamika D. Mallory. Tamika, thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Stephen. I appreciate it. Now, in the wake of George Floyd's murder last year, you spoke at a Minneapolis press conference. And uh, when you got up to the, the mic, you gave a speech um, that, that has been called the speech of a generation. I, I recently found out that you did not prepare that ahead of time. Is it true that you were just speaking from the heart in that moment? Yes, I didn't have time to really prepare. You know, the night before we were out at the protest and it was really late um, and there was a lot happening as America and others watched uh, from around the world. And so I went home and went to the hotel. I fell asleep. I woke up the next morning and I was told to get to a press conference. Um, and I, you know, started speaking without having any notes, which I usually do. Um, and I was pretty much just speaking from my heart. Um, you... Um... You are a prominent member of the present civil rights movement uh, in the United States. And right now, we're, we're, we're seeing a very interesting phenomenon, which is the rise of decentralized protests, decentralized civil rights movement. How do those compare with the sort of the, the centralized single leader movements of the 1950s and the 1960s? What is the difference in your mind? Well, I mean, I think we still appreciate um, the history of civil rights and, you know, there will always be a passing of, of the baton and sort of an evolution of how people fight. Um, and what we're seeing now that I think is actually phenomenal is the role of women being acknowledged. In the past, um, women were certainly in the background helping to make things happen. Uh, Dr. King had an Ella Baker and other women. Uh, but today, we're beginning to see a focus on women's leadership. And um, I personally try my best to make sure that uh, the men who are working with me um, are also uplifted and that it is not so much a separation of the two, but that we're all in the space together. And I think what makes it uh, really powerful is that it's, it's much more difficult to be targeted um, by uh, those authorities, if you will, or those outside forces that would like to try to stop you. So the decentralized movement give an opportunity for more people to be involved and less of one person having all the stress of everything that goes along or the weight that goes along with the movement. Um, do, does social media help in the decentralization of a movement like this? Absolutely. Social media provides an opportunity for people on one side of the country to speak to people on another side. I mean, when I think about just what happened um, when the protests in Ferguson started and you had kids in places like Iraq uh, sending over information about how to use milk in your eyes in case there is, um, you know, a, a, a pepper spraying. Um, and, and, and those tactics were actually used. They shared resources across the world world um, with other young people. And, uh, and you know, for some, uh, they may not understand the importance of kids, especially young people who really are catching sort of the flack or dealing with grown folks that are making decisions that impact their lives. They're not the cause of what we see happening. It is really government and adults um, who create these circumstances. But yet these young people are using resources to connect with one another and spread, you know, and spread spread these movements far and wide. We have to take a quick break. We're right back with more Tamika D. Mallory.